Mahi, starting with you, National and ACT would scrap the Māori Health Authority. What did you make of Debbie's kōrero before? Uh, you know, I think she's on point. Um, I think, you know, the whole scrapping of the Māori Health Authority is uh, a little bit premature when we don't actually know what exactly it looks like or what it's or how it's going to be. You know, the argument is, and Richard will probably jump in here and say that, um, you know, we, uh, we haven't been told what these look like, but we don't know what they look like yet because we haven't got there. We've never had this opportunity in the 182 years that we've had. What we have had is failing health systems, failing education systems. So this is an opportunity to try and see something. And if you look at the example, and she's right, the example of Waipareira and uh, Muma and all of those other Māori health authorities is some form of co-governance or cooperation with the government. It can work. Richard, your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think Mihi's right. And uh, during the, the whole COVID thing, there were clear failings in terms of delivering particularly vaccinations to Māori. And you saw some Māori health groups, um, for example, in um, the East Coast, do really well mm -hmm. and, and get that them, do that themselves. I asked Pene Hanare whether or not the performance over COVID vindicated the decision to go for a Māori health authority and he just simply said, quite unusually for a politician, one word, yes. <laughs> so straight to the point. This is all in the context, guys, of the debate about hupuapa and co-governance. So Richard, I mean, you know, Axe jumped in here. Why is the notion of co-governance, particularly from their point of view, such a lightning rod? Well, it, this is one of these silly political situations where we don't actually know what we're talking about. And, and I noticed in the interview with, with Debbie that really she's not specific about what you're talking about in terms of um, uh, co-governance. Yes, there was a reference to Makati uh, Mai and its proposal for separate chambers and all that sort of thing. But Willie Jackson has said consistently through this that his work is to look at how applying the Declaration of, of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples to New Zealand. And Hei Puapua is part of that, but it's not all of it. So until Jackson reports and tells us what's in his, his bag, we don't know. Well, it's, but we're creating it on the go, aren't we? Because it's really about partnership. It's about this um, relationship that we have as Tangata Tiriti and Tangata Whenua, and it's never really been a true partnership. And we can tell that by our statistics and how we Māori sit in them. So you can't... Uh, you, I mean, there's no blueprint. We're creating it on the go. And, you know, Māori will tell you that they are working in partnership constantly in our jobs and in our industries. I'm working with TV3 constantly to try and grow cultural intelligence. We're doing it anyway. This is just about doing it on a larger scale. Mm. What do you think will happen eventually with the He Puapua report? Um, I think it's, it's one of those things that, you know, people just get really upset about the, the name of it. But actually, when you dig into it, of course not everything in there is going to, you know, to be right, yeah. to use. But um, there are some really great examples in there of how... Because at the end of it, it's about trying to get equity, right? And, 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 and you know, Māori into a better place. Because when Māori are healthy and succeeding, it's better for the whole country. So no one's working against anyone here. They're just trying to, you know, I think that, you know... Partnerships and co-governance work. If you look at the Waikato River Authority, which was actually signed under, and the architect of that was Chris Finlayson in 2010. Prior to that, the ACT Party supported the National Government in Environment Canterbury. That was a similar kind of partnership. So, I mean, so you're saying that these models already they're exist? There. They're, they're there. Is this, is this a case, as Debbie Naruwa Packer says, Richard, of, of evolving? That you know, evolving our institutions and evolving our constitution to a state which moves away from one person, one vote. Well, there's a bit of a difference between um, evolving co-governance or or, or or partnership at a grassroots level and, and at the level that we're talking about toward to to what is proposed, say, in Makate Mai, which is quite dramatic constitutional reshaping, where you would have multiple. Houses of Parliament, effectively. I mean, one, one of the, I mean, there's several models in there, but one of them has three. Now, whether we want three parliaments is... <laughs> well, keep you and your job going quite, quite well. I don't, I don't, I don't be a one-armed paper hanger at the end. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, ko te kaia te rangatira he kōrero, I think, um, you know, what's important is that there's discussions, at intelligent discussions with the right people at the table to try and work through it. These mm. are all just, you know, ideas. Yeah.